first spirograph machine. What a spirograph is, is it usually has these gears that would spin and make these intricate patterns and you'd use a pen. But I thought I would take that idea and make a sand table that can make these spirograph designs. All the files are in the comments, so, so be sure to check that out. And I'll be showing you um, everything step by step how to build it. This project just uses three millimeter board which I cut it with the laser cutter. But if you don't have a laser cutter, you could use a scroll saw or a other uh, kind of jigsaw. And I cut out the main base parts and then we can assemble it. Here are all the pieces. The first is using this, the bottom base and attaching the four pillars on each of the side. And they just have these little slots so you can just plug in um, if you want, you can use some hot glue to a fashion it or some super glue. Next is to put two spacers in the middle. And that's just so that when we put the stepper motor on, it gives it some height because the center stepper motor needs to be a little higher than the other motor. Then we'll put two spacers on top of the second motor so that we can put our cross beam on and then fasten everything down. I'm using M2 screws here and you just have to make sure that the right length. These are three millimeter boards so it should be over nine millimeters long. Then we can M2 put the top, uh, piece on. And again, these are all plug and play. And so you just make sure that everything goes in the slots. You notice that the center rotor um, shaft is out a little bit longer. And the right one is just three millimeters. So we can place the smaller gear on it like that. The next step is to cut out the gears and then assemble the slider arms. I'm just using five millimeter dowels to fasten everything together. So what you do is get a wooden dowel, and then you just, I'm just using some pliers, peg like this, then you have your your holes and then you'll just drive it With the sliders on, we can put on the arm and just make sure that it can slide freely. And then you can cut off any protruding dowel. Then we can assemble the arm. For the arm, I'm using a little thinner dowel, just using a skewer, which you can pick up at the dollar store. When you're hammering these things in, make sure to go a little bit slower. 
as when I did it, I did it a little bit faster and it cracked a little bit. This platform will be used to place our magnet on. I got some N52 magnets and it will go right on the top here. Just make sure that it slides freely and doesn't catch on the sides. Then we can put our bearing and it has a five millimeter hole in the center and that will be able to go over the shaft of the stepper motor. And you can put it on to the middle motor and then just make sure that it moves the other gear and it moves smoothly. And then we can put our last smaller gear on the middle there. And when you slide it, just make sure it can go underneath that little platform that we, where we would pull it, our main it. To get the main platform on, we will use some dowels and then use the circular spacers to get to the height that you need so that the base will just be touching the main it that you put on the center arm. After putting on the main base, just double check that the magnet just barely touches the top and you can see that the ball moves. The next thing is to build the walls of the main platform so that the sand doesn't fall off the table. To do that, it's just like building a puzzle. All the pieces just kind of stick together and I'm just using some glue. And clamp in everything down just wait for everything to dry I drilled a little hole on the side so that we can feed our LED strip wire through and then we'll put this LED strip on the last ring of our table just removing the little tape and then we can stick it around the, the circumference of the inside here Just cutting it to length and then putting on the last ring. The last ring is a little bit wider so it will hide the LED strip just underneath it. Then for to make it look better we can add some copper wire along the perimeter of the circumference of the, the table. And before I tried to solder it but I found this using tacks worked uh, a lot better. Then we can clean it up with some metal polish. You can see how dirty the metal was, but after the polish, it really does shine. And the last step would be to put on your glass top. Before I was using acrylic, but acrylic it easily scratches and this glass looks better. The left pod is for the brightness and then the right one is for speed. So I'll be showing you exactly how the electronics works. So. I just put the electronics underneath and here's a list of all the parts for the electronic parts. And here's the schematic. So the first thing is to put in the stepper drivers and the CNC board to the Arduino Uno. And just make sure that the little potentiometer meter, if you're using the M, uh, TMC 2209 make sure the potentiometer is at the top if you're using this kind of green board it's at the bottom so just be double double check the orientation there so we can look at the power switch so from your power source whether it's a battery or a 12 volt um, source the positive goes to the positive pin on the cnc board and the negative will be broken by our switch switch here so we need to do a little bit of soldering uh, on this project. You can see I just put the, the power switch here and so from negative we'll solder on one side 
and the other side will come from our power source, whether it's a battery or our 12 volt battery adapter. Next, we can solder our potentiometers here. I have 10K pots and we can take five volts and I'm just using this pin right here on the CNC board and we'll solder a wire between our two potentiometers right here. And so the two editor pins, we're going to have uh, negative and also positive. And so you wanna solder a wire between that and then you're gonna feed off a positive five volts on this side right here. And the other side will be connected to ground. Now we have our center taps that we'll be using to connect to A0 and A1 on the board and that's connected up here. And you can see that A0 is this green line right here and that's for the LED brightness. It'll be connected to the abort pin on the CNC board. And the A1 drawing speed pin will be connected to the hold pin on the CNC board. And you can see it by the purple line there. And so you can just, they have header pins, so you can just plug it in there and just solder the potentiometers like so. Now for the stepper motor driver uh, drivers, the motors positive are connected at the right hand side like that. You can see the schematic. You could also use the IR sensor, but I found that it's very easy to lose a remote control. So I like just using the pots there. Next we have our LED strip and it's controlled by a single MOSFET. You can see my MOSFETs right here. And I just plugged uh, the, the legs in onto the MOSFET. So the positive rail of the LED will go to the positive 12 volt rail. And then we're just gonna break the negative ground. So it'll go to the um, drain and then the source will go to ground. And the gate is D11 and that connects to Z minus on our CNC board. Okay, so you can use any kind of ground and the Z minus pin is right, right here. Okay, so that's the basics of, basic of the electronics and just following the schematic, you can put everything there and then we can solder everything together. Now, a unique feature is the homing feature of this device. So when I first turn on, it automatically goes to the center of the table because usually you'd use a Hall Effect uh, sensor but this doesn't need that because we'll just go as far as we can and that will be zero zero. So that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed and I'll see you guys in the next video.